I welcome you to the second video of my lecture series on Introduction to Complex Analysis. In my last video, I discussed about the origin of complex numbers and the tremendous work of Bombelli. In case you missed the last video, the link is in the description below. In this video, I will discuss about the representation of complex numbers graphically and we will try to visualize complex numbers in complex plane. So let's start. Let us start with the formal definition of complex numbers. The set of complex numbers denoted by C is defined as the set of ordered pairs of real numbers. That means it will contain all ordered pairs A, B, where both A and B are real numbers. With two operations defined as A, B plus C, D, which is the addition equals to A plus C, comma, B plus D and A, B into CD is equal to, which is the multiplication, is equal to AC minus BD comma BC plus AD. A complex number is an ordered pair of real numbers with these two rules for addition and multiplication. Now, since complex number I am saying is an ordered pair of real number, it may tempt us to visualize complex numbers as points in the two-dimensional Cartesian plane symbolized by R2, that is R cross R. As we know, this is a real line, one, two, three, etc. Minus one, one, two, three, minus one, etc. And, and we know all, all elements of this R2, of this two-dimensional Cartesian plane, are actually points. And points are written as ordered pair of real numbers, where this A lies in this uh, x-axis, we can say, and this B lies in y-axis, we can say. Both are real axis. Now, we are saying complex numbers are ordered pair of real numbers. Ordered pair of real numbers are points lying in two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system. So this tempts us to think that complex numbers are points in two-dimensional Cartesian plane. Let me tell you that is not correct. There are huge differences in the concept of complex numbers and points in two-dimensional Cartesian plane. One such difference is the operation multiplication which is written here. You cannot multiply two points, but you can multiply two complex numbers. So complex numbers are conceptually not points in the two-dimensional plane. Now the question is where we can plot complex numbers and how we can plot them. Complex numbers are plotted in a complex plane, in the complex plane known as Argand plane, and which looks like this. A similar structure as R2 and the horizontal axis is also similar. The horizontal axis is a real line in this case also. Likewise R2. But the vertical axis here is totally different. In case of R2, the unit distance in the vertical axis is one unit. Here we consider, let us consider the unit distance in the vertical axis as say, as say uh, uh, J unit. So this will be j, this is 2j, this is 3j, like this. This is minus j, this. Now what is this j? As for now, consider that this j is nothing but the unit distance in this vertical axis. Like in this case, in case of R2, the unit distance is 1. Here I am considering the unit distance as j. We will 
within a few minutes find out actually what is j okay fine now these two looks almost similar and it is uh, very interesting if i tell you that actually we will be able to establish a one one correspondence means a bijective mapping between these two systems c and r2 we will actually be able to establish a bijective mapping to do that or an one one correspondence to do that just concentrate or focus on these two on these two elements just focus on these two elements and how you can relate these two elements once you are able to relate these two elements rest of the things will be very easy to relate these two or to find out a correspondence between these two i am actually assuming this j is equivalent to say 0 comma 1 because you know the coordinate of this one in the vertical axis is actually 0 comma 1 so i assume i'm assuming this j as 0 1 and i'm noting one more fact that any number x which lies in the real line that is which is purely a real number which lies in the horizontal axis in any one of these two uh, systems the position of that or the coordinate of that will be x comma 0 so x comma 0 is actually equivalent to writing only a real number x and i am saying 0 1 as my j so if this is my assumption first let us find out what is the uh, what is this j let us try to find out if i look at it in this way whether we can do anything or not fine so if this j is 0 comma 1 then we can say j square will be equal to j into j that is equal to 0 comma 1 into 0 comma 1 that is as per the definition of multiplication in complex numbers we know that a b into c d should be equal to will be equal to a c minus b d comma b c plus a d so if we apply this formula in this case we get this as minus 1 comma 0 now this is equivalent to minus 1 because we have said that x 0 is actually the real number x so this is equivalent to minus 1 therefore what you have got therefore j is actually j square is equal to minus 1 that is j is square root of minus 1 that means j is the imaginary unit and we represent imaginary unit with imaginary units with the symbol i so basically this j is i so the unit distance now i can write here the unit distance is i so this will be i this is 2i this is 3i so we can now say that complex plane is will look like this where uh, will comprise of two axes where the horizontal axis is the real axis or the real line horizontal axis is the real axis or the real line and the vertical axis will contain all multiples of i and the unit distance in the vertical axis can be treated as i simply or the imaginary unit i so that's why we call this axis as the imaginary axis and this is how uh, 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 the complex plane looks now i told you that with this we can even further now we will not write j we will write i everywhere and i told you that we can even get a one one correspondence between the complex plane and r2 how to get that any ordered pair ab if i have an ordered pair ab now any ordered pair ab can actually be 
written as a into 1 comma 0 plus b into 0 comma 1. This is simple arithmetic of ordered pairs. Now 1 comma 0 again is equivalent to 1 by this property. So we can write this a into 1 plus b into now what is 0 comma 1? 0 comma 1 is actually now i. So 0 comma 1 is the imaginary unit i because j is actually i. So we can say this is plus b into i. That means this can be written as a plus b i. So the correspondence is any ordered pair a b can now be treated as a plus b i. And this leads to the one one correspondence. That is any point a b in R2 will correspond to an imaginary number a plus b i or a complex number a plus b i. Now I can say in the complex plane. So this is our one one correspondence. And if I write it explicitly, I can write any complex number a plus b i will correspond to an ordered pair a b. So I can write any complex number a plus b i will correspond to the ordered pair a b and this defines the one one correspondence between the complex plane and r2 and this gives us the liberty this gives us the liberty to to some extent visualize the complex plane as r2 this enables us now if i have a complex number z equals to x plus y into i if i have a complex number z equals to x plus y into i we can plot the complex number as uh, simple as we used to plot things in the two dimensional system because we have already a two dimensional cartesian plane because we have already seen that there is a one one correspondence so we can plot it in a similar way so this is if this is my z equals to x plus i y then this will be my x and this will be my this will be my y okay so uh, ideally you you may tell me i i should write this as i y but uh, since it is written imaginary here this means everything i write in this axis when calculating needs to be multiplied with i so with this understanding uh, i am writing this y only as y to avoid notational clumsiness now this x lies in the real line that's why this x is called the real part of z and this y lies in the imaginary axis or imaginary line that's why this is called the imaginary part of z now the conjugate of this complex number z the conjugate of this complex number z defined as conjugate z or z bar denoted as con z or z bar is defined as x minus yi x minus yi the conjugate is defined as this if we plot it if we try to plot the conjugate how we can plot the conjugate pretty simple the conjugate will be the conjugate will be something like this the conjugate will be something like this if i extend it a bit further uh, because uh, if that is y this will be my minus y so the conjugate will look like this if you look at it carefully the conjugate is nothing but we have reflected this number z around x axis we have kept a mirror at x axis and we have taken the reflection 
That's it, nothing else. So this is the conjugate z equals to z bar equals to x minus i y. Now, the absolute value of z or the modulus of z, the modulus of z denoted as mod z or the absolute value of z is square root of x square plus y square. This again pretty simple. If you look at this diagram, this length is y, this length is x. So if I consider the length of this z from the origin mod z by Pythagorean law that has to be square root of x square plus y square. So done. So this is our absolute value of z. Very elementary things and very elementary um, ideas of complex numbers. And this is how we, we, we visualize conjugate and uh, this is what we mean by absolute value or modulus. Now, before we proceed further, now before we proceed further, I will tell you one of the most interesting result of mathematics and in particular complex analysis, which will help us a lot in visualizing so many things. That result is known as Euler's The result is known as Euler's formula. The result is known as Euler's formula. It's very short and sweet. Euler's formula says that, Euler's formula says that for any real number x, 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 e to the power ix will be equal to cosine x plus i into sine x. It's a beautiful formula. Looks very simple, but is of immense use. For any real number x, e to the power i x is cosine x plus i sine x. Now, how we can prove it? How we can prove it? We can get this result very easily, but to prove it, I will use uh, two or three things which I have not discussed yet because I have not yet discussed about the derivative of, of functions of complex variables. So I'd advise you or I'd request you to right now consider, for now consider this i only as a constant, nothing else. Just treat i as a constant and apply these rules. Later when I'll be talking about derivatives of complex functions, uh, you will see that uh, everything will fall in line. Everything will be uh, uh, as per we discussed, whatever we will be discussing here. So uh, without wasting time, let us prove. Let us see how we get Euler's formula. Fine. Uh, we know that the derivative of, we know that the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. We know that the derivative of sine x with respect to x, of course, is equal to cosine x. And we also know that the derivative of e to the power kx, where k is a constant, is equal to k into e to the power kx. Remember, this k is a constant. This k is a constant. We all know this formula very well. Now, if I give you a system of, uh, if I give you a simple differential equation, say dy dx is equal to i into y with an initial condition that y at x equal to 0 is equal to 1. And if I ask you, can you solve this differential equation? What will be your answer? 
can you solve this differential equation based on the derivatives that I discussed above? I'm sure you all can solve. And you will tell me immediately that the solution of this differential equation can be written as y equals to e to the power ix. Because if y is equal to e to the power ix, then dy dx is equal to i into e to the power ix. I am treating i as a constant as I told you earlier. So i into e to the power ix. That means e to the power ix is y. So it is i into y satisfies the differential equation. And as for initial condition, y at x equal to 0. If you plug in x equal to 0 into e to the power ix, you will get 1. So it satisfies. So this is clearly a solution of this particular differential equation. Now, some of you may say, sir, why you are being partial? This one, if I write in a way y equal to cosine x plus i sine x, this one will also be a solution. To check, we can check very easily. If this is y, then dy dx as per the previous rules, will be minus sine x plus i into cosine x. I'm just treating i as a constant here also. Now, minus 1 means i square. i square is minus 1. So, if I plug in here i square, then I can write it as i square into sine x plus i into cosine x. If I take i common, this will be i into I'm writing cosine x first. So cos x, cos x plus sine x. So this means this will be equal to i into cos x plus i, uh, sorry, I missed i. Cos x plus i square. If I take i common, there will be i. So cos x plus i sine x. What will be that? Cos x plus i sine x is y. So this is i y. So satisfying my differential equation. As per initial condition, fine, plug in x equal to 0 in y. If I plug in x equal to 0 in y, I get this as cos 0 plus i sine 0. So that is equal to 1. So that means this also satisfies the differential equation with initial condition. That means this is also a solution of this differential equation. Now, we have got two two solutions for a for an initial value problems for an initial value problem but by piker's theorem we know that the solution of this initial of any initial value problem will be unique the solution of any initial value problem will be unique but we got two solutions we can see here so together what we can say if I consider this, these facts together, if we consider these facts together, what we can say? The two solutions that we have got are actually same. That means this implies that e to the power ix is equal to cosine x plus i into sine x. Cosine x plus i into sine x. Therefore, we can represent we can represent e to the power i x as cosine x plus i into sine x. This is a tremendous formula. It's a very important, very useful formula. We will be using it a lot of times in our in our future work. In the next video, we will use Euler's formula to have nice representation of complex numbers in complex plane. See you in the next video.